Hey everybody, it's Rob with Cherry City Guns and Ammo, and today we're not playing with guns or ammo. Instead, we're in my workshop, and I decided to bring you along for something that I thought you might find pretty cool. We're actually making a pair of bolt-action pens. This one right here is made out of a shed mule deer antler, and this one is made out of coyote jaw that has been put into resin that I try to make look like camo. So stick around and we'll show you how we go through the whole process of making these pens for a couple of really special people that came through when it counted for complete strangers. All right, before we get into actually making the pen, let's go over kind of what it takes to make a pen. First, obviously, you have to have a blank, and your blanks can be many different uh, materials, sometimes a combination of materials. Um, I've done a lot of blanks out of wood. The blanks that we're gonna do today, so first off, this is what I'm calling a coyote jaw and resin blank. So these are, are two, or both halves of a coyote's lower jaw um, no, with no teeth, the teeth ch chatter and break and don't turn, but the bone turns really nice. And I've put those two uh, halves of the lower jaw into a mold, and then I mixed up several different colors of resin, and I poured them in there. And the whole intent was uh, to try to kind of make it look like camo. So that's supposed to be kind of like camo resin with coyote jaw bones uh, in embedded in them. And then the other pen, we're gonna use this chunk of a mule deer shed antler. Um, and I'll let you know, whenever you're turning bone, whether it's antler or the jaw bones, uh, you have to wear a respirator. Those organic compounds, if you breathe them in, you can get really sick. And then I keep the respirator on until I've run my dust collection enough to kind of clear out the air. So from the time that I turn and sand them, there will be a gap in time uh, before we come back to the video and I actually start doing the assembly because I don't want to do the assembly wearing the respirator So I'll turn them sand them and put finish on them Then we'll cut the video and I'll come back a while later and do the rest of the work uh, So yeah, you need you need a blank you need some some bone or some resin or resin and bone or you need some wood um, All different kinds of cool stuff um, and then you obviously need a pen blank And here is what a pen blank kit looks like so as you saw from the intro, because um, I finished the pens and went back in time so I could film the intro before I filmed the making of, because that's how we do things. Um, you'll see that these are bolt action pen kits. And what the actual kit consists of, here's the, the tip, and it kind of looks like a, a nickel plated 308 casing with a copper bullet on the end, but it's just a pen tip. It's just hollow all the way through. Um, the actual bolt action section for the back of it, you know, it looks like their little rifle clip section, and then the bolt that actually opens and closes it. And then for the internals, it's really simple. The actual refill that actually contains the ink, and this, this is a very common refill you find in any office supply or Walmart or whatever. Um, the spring that makes it go back and forth. And then the most important thing to me um, is this brass tube. So, the first thing you do is you take your blank, whatever it's made out of, you drill a hole through it, just big enough to fit this brass tube, and you glue this brass tube in. And then the brass tube goes onto your mandrel on your, on your lathe. You turn the blank, and then once everything's turned, sanded, finished, all that stuff, all the rest of the kit, when you're installing the rest of the kit, it's pressing into this brass tube, which will be inside of your blank. Uh, and then they, they make all different kinds. Like you can see, this comes with one brass tube because this type of pen only uses one section. Um, some types of pens, like this one, uh, it's two pieces of, of, of wood or whatever you're gonna use. Um, you've got an upper section that, that twists that actually opens it. That one's a little stuff that's been sitting around for a while. Um, and this is actually a piece of wood that was in the flower bed in a hotel in Phoenix, Arizona I stayed at. It was a gray weathered piece of wood and just, I don't know, I was trying to kind of keep a memory of the trip. So I grabbed that piece of wood out of the flower bed and brought it home. And underneath all that gray weathering 
this really cool yellow wood with these dark markings on it was underneath. Pretty, no, no idea what kind of wood it is. Um, or sometimes it uses two sections like this. And that's just because this has a screw on cap. And the cap then screws onto the back of the pen. Um, this one is kind of like our coyote jaw blank, except for this is a piece of a uh, alligator jaw that's in that piece. So that's kind of, it'll kind of give you an idea of how this uh, coyote is going to turn out. Um, and then sometimes I get really, really uh, interesting pieces of wood, not because of the wood themselves, but sometimes where it's sourced. As you can see, this one here is laser, and game, laser engraved with the Game of Thrones logo, um, which I have a laser engraver. I, I did that laser engraving. And the reason it's got that logo on it's not just because I thought it'd be cool to put that on there. But this piece of wood uh, was actually used on one of the sets of Game of Thrones. And I actually have several of these with certificates of authenticity saying this wood was sourced from a set of the Game of Thrones. And I've done a lot of stuff with certificate of authenticity, um, different, different woods or materials like from stadiums. Uh, replacing old seats and stadiums. I did a pen for my nephew from an old uh, New York Yankees stadium seat. Uh, I've done all kinds of stuff like that. So anyway, now that you kind of see what goes into creating the pen, we're going to get started on the work. And the first thing is we're going to drill holes for these tubes and get them glued into place. Let me get that all set up and I'll be right back. All right, up first we're going to get these holes drilled. And you typically, you, not typically, you always use a drill bit that is slightly bigger diameter than your tube, so that your tube fits in uh, nice and loose. And this is a jig that I use. It just keeps my blanks nice and square when I drill them. And I realize my arm's right in the way of seeing this, so let me see if I can figure out how to do this without putting my big stupid arm in your way. You have to go slow and easy when you're drilling resin. Uh, you can make the resin blow out, which obviously we don't want to do. We're in no rush here. There we go. Popped out that end just fine. Tube that fits in there nice. That's just about perfect. All right, next thing we gotta do is we gotta take our, our tubes. We gotta rough them up. And we just do that so that the glue that glues them inside the blanks has something to bite onto. So I use a rather heavy uh, sandpaper. I think this is like an old 80 grit disc that I had laying around. And I just turn it and just get the tube roughened up. So it looks nice and scratched. That is the whole purpose of that, just to give the glue something to bite onto. I can see these fit in really, really nice. Very nice. And drilling antler, you know, it can be really tricky. Uh, this worked out absolutely perfect. Uh, as you can see, my drill bit came right through this narrowest part. And I'm not going to have the blank in there very far where it's glued in. Because if at all possible, I like to leave a little bit of the bark on the outside visible. Um, and that's, that's kind of the toughest part about drilling horn is it's always curved and so how you set up in the jig can be really tricky especially if you want to be able to leave a little bit of the outside bark because you can see that outer layer that outer layer is really hard and shiny and takes on a really nice polish and it just has that cool rustic look the inside is very porous and usually pretty white there can be a little bit of mineral streaking from like blood that was left behind that didn't completely drain out um, but the most interesting part i think is you get little spots of bark on it um, like this picture up, I'm, I'm going to put up in the corner. Um, that is a, a razor handle. It holds uh, Gillette Mach 3 disposable heads. And that is a blacktail deer shed. And I was lucky enough with that to 
be able to turn it. You know, it was a really weird shaped piece, but it left a whole lot of that, that horn bark on there. Those little imperfections where it's not turned to the perfect shape like the rest of it, because there's a little bit of that natural bark showing through. And uh, that I made for a, a good friend of mine who really enjoys it. Uh, one of these days I'm gonna make one for myself. Um, but yeah, anytime I turn deer horn, I like to be able to leave a little bit of bark if I can. So now I'm gonna just glue these up real quick and then I'll show you how we flush the blanks with the bit and then it'll be time to start turning. All right, time to get those, uh, well, I can't talk. Time to glue the tubes into the blanks. So we just use a little bit of super glue. I put a little bit more down at the base. Don't worry about so much up by my fingers because I don't want to glue myself to myself. So we just kind of work this around. By the time we push it in there, this upper part will get plenty of coating of super glue. So I kind of do this to make sure it's evenly spread. And then just use a pencil to shove it down in there and get it where I want it to be. Then, this is a activator. Makes your super glue up, go off pretty much like immediately. I'll get out the uh, flushing tool and we'll get these flushed up and start turning. All right, here's my tool that I use for uh, flushing up the bits with the end of the, the blanks. And so this is a cutter up here and this is a pilot. And there's all different size pilots uh, because different pen kits use different size of brass tubes and then they need a different pilot. Anyway, that pilot just fits down that brass tube, keeps everything nice and, and uh, perpendicular, and you go like that until you get down to the brass tube. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna mount these on the lathe to get ready to turn them. As you can see, that brass tube is right to the end on both sides. If it'll focus there for me, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, trust me, brass tube's right to the edge of the hole. That's where it needs to be. That's the whole point of that, that piloted cutter. Then we take these little bushings and we stick these bushings in and all I have to do is turn the blank down so that the ends are flush with the ends of those bushings and it'll fit the pen kit. So you have different bushing kits for different pen kits. Um, and what you do between the bushings is completely up to you. I've made them where they're real fat, I've made them real just straight and skinny, I've made them some with a nice gentle curve, which that gentle curve is kind of what we are going to be doing with this blank. I'm gonna turn this around when you're doing this, there's not a front or, or a back, like which direction you're supposed to have it. But for some reason, I'm just particular. I like to set these up so that if this was the pen, this is the orientation. I intend to have this end be the be towards the tip and this towards the back. And I just, I like having oriented that way. So this is a pen turning mandrel on my lathe. This holds this, this, uh, these bushings between the centers. Keeps everything nice and secure. And then I just need to get my, uh, my tool rest set up. So I want it to be right, right around there. This is my preferred, what we call a roughing tool. That's just for getting the blank roughed out. And this is a, a tool that I made myself. This is the handle. It's a white oak handle. It's a big piece of steel and then mounted on the end. This is a carbide disc type bit. Mm -hmm. um, I just drilled and tapped a hole going through there. And these carbide bits are crazy sharp. And if it dulls, I can loosen up the screw, turn it slightly, and I've got a fresh cutting bit. So, you know, when I first set it up, I kind of like to make sure I like where everything is located, which that seems pretty good right there. 
I'm gonna take a second, I'm gonna throw on my uh, respirator and my face shield and get turning. You won't really be able to understand me with my respirator on. Um, so no talking while I'm turning. So I'll throw some music or something like that on there for you. All right, we're ready to go. There you go, that's all turned. There we go, so that one is turned and sanded and ready for finish. So we're gonna finish them both at the same time. So there's our uh, mule deer shed blank ready for finish. Uh, here's our coyote blank ready to get started. And I think this is going to be towards the tip. All right, next on is finish. 
Okay, since these are our one section uh, blanks, I'm able to put them both on here to add the finish. And uh, I, had, I changed out the bushings to these Delron bushings. It's a, just a, a plastic and they're a tapered bushing so they fit on any, any blank. And <clears throat> that's just so the, the, the finish doesn't glue the blanks to the steel bushings, which I'll switch back out to uh, once we, we go back to sand and then polish the finish. Uh, which we do actually sand the finish to get it even. It tends to go on slightly uneven, even with these turning on the lathe at its lowest point. Because um, we use an activator and it tends to make the finish bloom, which kind of makes it get wavy. And what we're using for finish that we use the activator on, it's this really fancy stuff called cyanoacrylate. Which if you know what that is, you'll know the only thing fancy about it is the name. Because cyanoacrylate is actually the name for super glue. It's the chemical name for super glue. And so we've got this really thin super glue that we're going to use that's going to really soak in and penetrate. And then we've got a thicker gel type super glue uh, that's going to kind of build up our main finish on the outside. And we use super glue because you can apply a layer, hit it with the activator, and it's already dry and hard and you're ready to, to add another layer. And you can build up several layers very quickly, very easily. And then once you sand your super glue back down nice and, and uh, flat, take all the waviness out of it, it takes on actually an incredible polish. So I use a, one of the little baggies from the pen kit as like a little finger condom. And literally all you do is you just let it slowly run onto the blank and wipe it on like that. So, that's our activator. That super glue is already dry. It's pretty cool. So, we'll turn that around. Get another layer on there. I'll change out my little strip of paper towel. So I just tear paper towels into a strip, into strips, and then just kind of fold them up, roll them up, whatever. And they make great little applicators for my fancy cyanoacrylate finish. I kind of rub it on, like you can see, because I try to flatten it out. Um, I try to make these really, really thin coats. Many thin coats is far better than a couple really thickly globbed on coats. And also by having um, more thin coats that you hit with the activator, since it's less massive super glue that you're hitting with the activator each time, it tends to do less of that blooming. So it's quicker, quicker and easier for me to get um, the finish sanded down and smooth so I can move on to the polishing step. I almost think I have a hair on there. I got a hair in the finish. That has never happened to me before. But it looks like I'm getting it rubbed out of there. Looks like it's barely stuck on the outside. I saw it while I was turning. And it's just barely touching. It's probably because my hoodie is covered in dog hair. <laughs> How funny. Well, I am going to take some really, really fine sandpaper because I wasn't able to get rid of all that hair. I'm going to use some 800 grit. So it's super, super fine. And I'm just going to gently sand that finish to hopefully get rid of that hair. And then we will go back to adding some more finish. There we go. All right, I got rid of the dog hair. 
How embarrassing. All right, let me get this really dry. We'll get back to adding more finish. As you can see, there's already a decent kind of sheen to these guys. I'm going to add one more layer of this thin glue to this antler blank to try to replace anything that we just took off that really fine sandpaper. I barely touched it and that was like 800 grit, so I don't think I really removed much. And really this thin stuff, I mainly use it to just soak in. So now we're going to thick, switch to the thicker gel super glue that's going to do more to kind of build up some uh, some nice layers some, to actually get some thickness to our finish. I think that is going to be good. And that's good because my little finger condom just finished melting through. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull these off. Wow, you can already see that finish looks really nice. We just gotta get it evened up and polished, but wow, it is gonna look really, really good. So I'm gonna pull these off. I'm gonna switch them out to the steel bushings and then I'll be back to only doing them you know, one at a time. Um, but I'll bring it right back. All right, we got our deer antler blank back on there. We're gonna start off with some 400 grit paper. Then we're gonna go to some 800 grit paper and then we're going to uh, polishing pads from there. I have to be very careful here, very slight amount of pressure. Um, this first sanding is the most critical because we're trying to get the, this is what we're using to get the the finish flat. Um, it might be hard to see in the camera. I could have tried to show it to you, but it kind of has waves to it. So that's all we're doing right now. We're trying to get rid of those waves. That's all we're doing with this 400 grit. And then once those waves are gone, then uh, we'll be on to polishing. That is pretty darn close. I'm gonna hit it with some wet 800 grit. All right. During this part, I'm still just trying to get the finish down nice and flat. I check it often. So I don't want to accidentally take off too much and possibly burn through my finish because that would be really bad. We're really, really close here. There we go. So I don't know if you can tell in camera, but that was much shinier. And we're looking for it to get basically dull. If it's dull, it means we've taken off the out, very, very outermost layer, and it's gotten rid of that little bit of shine. And so when you first start doing it, you'll have like stripes of shiny, stripes of dull. And that's because you've taken off the tops of the, the ridges, and those are now dull. And the shiny parts are kind of the valleys. Once you get it to where the whole thing is dull, that means you've, you've flattened it. You've taken everything down even with each other. So now we're ready to go on to these polishing pads these micro mesh pads. And they start off at like 1600 grit. That's what this one is. And then it goes all the way up to 25,000 grit. That's over a series of nine grits. 
Not a hole you can see it. Maybe I'll zoom in a little closer. Nope, that's it. Um, you can see a little buildup of white powder or white kind of juice there. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that. It means I've taken off some of that super glue, and that's super glue dust mixed with the, with the water. Once I've done that, I know that grit has now completed its job, and you're ready to move on to the next pad. I try to wipe it off in between, get rid of any excess uh, kind of slurry from each pad, so that way I know when I see that slurry build up, it's from that fresh pad. It's actually had a chance to do its job. You get up to these uh, higher grit, you got to really turn up the, uh, the speed for them to do their job. You don't really see the build up as much anymore once you get to the higher grits either. At that point, you're not even, you're not really removing anything more. You're just buffing it out. This is the last pad. Okay. So that's the last pad, and look how nice and shiny, glossy that blank is. Now I take one more step. I do a little bit of a polish using just a paper towel. And I use this stuff right here, this Howard Feed and Wax. I put just a little dab on there, which that's like 10 times more than I actually needed. And that gives it just so much more shine. I mean, thing, that thing looks wet at this point. So that's taking on a really, really nice polish. So, now you've kind of seen how it's done. I'm gonna do it on the Coyote Blank. And I'll just fast forward through it because you've kind of seen the process. Oh yeah. go there's one coyote jaw blank done once again just looks you know wet very cool all right next is assembly and then we're all done all right we're on to assembly this is my my pen press here's our pen kit and our blank so what I like to do with these is typically I like to put the tip on first so that fits into there. We have to make a little length adjustment. So, try to keep it nicely aligned, guide it on. There we go. Tip is pressed on. Move this back a little further. 
I like to make it so the clip kind of points at the feature I want to highlight. In this case, it's that piece of bark. Oh, I'm so a little bit further. So. Done. Now it's all that's left to do. Unscrew the cap, drop in the refill. Oop, there goes my spring. And there we go. We have a completed mule deer shed bolt action pen. So let's knock out the uh, coyote jaw. I intended that to be the tip. Not that it actually matters, but. Add that on there. There we go. There we go. There is a Coyote Jaw bolt action pen. All right, well that sums up uh, how you go through making a couple of bolt action pens. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoy it. I kind of do this as a hobby, as something I really like to do. I sell them sometimes too, but mostly it's just for hobbies and for gifts and stuff like that. And because uh, it, it's inexpensive and it's, it's fun, it doesn't take too long to do uh, one or a couple of these. And, um, I really wanted to just thank a couple of people that, that helped me out. Uh, when my daughter and I were antelope hunting, our truck broke down in the middle of nowhere, and we had a, a couple of people that were uh, camped near us. They were complete strangers that really helped us out a lot and went out of their way. And being that they were good people, I tried as much as I could to give them money, and they flat turned me down. So I said, hey, can I at least maybe make you a couple of pens to say thank you? And and uh, they, they accepted that. So thank you very much to Rob, another Rob. No wonder he's such a good guy, same name. Um, and his grandpa for, for coming through for a couple of strangers uh, when things got hard. And that's the great thing about like the hunting community. Um, you find people that just band together, help each other out and make sure nobody is stranded or, or and gets home safe. So thank you guys so much. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next video. And this one, which is made out of coyote jaw that's been put into...